Susan Lee, thanks for your time. You were in Israel just last year. It's a country you know well. This mm. is a shocking attack that we've seen perpetrated by Hamas overnight. It certainly is, Kieran, and the coalition utterly condemns this unprovoked and abhorrent act by the militant group Hamas. To see some of the footage, and as you say, having been there recently, does of course bring it home. And as Israel's Prime Minister has rightly described this as an act of war, I know that everyone in Australia who feels that closeness and friendship with the State of Israel will be waking up this morning and finding some of this hard to believe. I also Kieran, want to call out the Prime Minister. It took him until 6am this morning to actually make a public statement about this. Now, you don't get nights off as world leader. And across the globe, we saw an immediate reaction from world leaders about this awful, awful event. And uh, it took till this morning for Anthony Albanese to make that statement. And I think he needs to be questioned about that today. Are you questioning his support for Israel? Well, Australians rightly deserve to know where the leader of their country stood in the hours after this attack. So I'm questioning his timing. And as I said, you, you don't get time off. You don't get to go to sleep, wake up and then put a statement out that surely you, as the leader of this country, should have put out the night before. They're questions for him to answer, Penny Kieran. Wong, Penny Wong, the foreign minister, was one of the first. I was online, like a lot of people, watching every bit of news that I could see as this unfolded. Penny Wong was one of the first. She's the foreign minister of the Albanese mm. government. So... I, you know, I put that to you in a sense She's not to the say, well, the, the Albanese government, She's, she, she did respond quickly. She's not the leader of the country. Australians rightly deserve to know where their Prime Minister stood. I see this as yet another failure of leadership by Anthony Albanese. When uh, you're just talking to Senator McCarthy, we've got just about a week to go until The Voice and... Again, complete failure of leadership from our Prime Minister on an issue that is right now dividing this country. I want to get your reaction to a message I just received from a member of the Cabinet saying, what a disgrace in response to your criticism of Anthony Albanese. What do you say to that? Mm. Well, I'm quite frequently critical of Anthony Albanese and I'm not going to take a backward step. Not on this, not on the voice, not on cost of living, not on his hapless response to so many of the urgent issues that face Australians every single day. I'm not taking a backward step, Kieran. We're six days away from the referendum. It looks like the no vote will go down. What's the Coalition's plan for closing the gap if it does go down? <laughs> Well, it's ironic that people are asking us what our plan is when right now we're facing this Prime Minister's voice referendum. It is a lose-lose for the country, Kieran. It's a lose-lose. Whatever the result is on Saturday, it will be bad, divisive and unhappy for Australians the next day. So we do need to bring the country together. And of course, as my colleagues focus on how we look at the events beyond the 15th of October, that's where we're all thinking. Because to see this referendum divide the country the way it has gives me no joy. I won't be happy, by the way, if no wins. I will be voting no with a heavy heart and I explain that in detail to everyone who asks me. And I'm pleased that so many people are engaging with the referendum, even though they don't have the detail, even though they don't have the answers that they're desperately seeking, with only one week to go. We have been constructive, Kieran, all the way along. There have been numerous points along the way where Peter Dutton has offered to work with the Prime Minister and, in fact, delay the referendum, not wishing to see the country divided. But I fear that that is happening already and it is so much it is just so important that the day after we we come together as a country you know we live in the best country in the world the luckiest yeah. country and we are all Australians 
Yep, yeah, indeed. I think a lot of people would agree with you on that point that it, it will be crucial for us to unite after the day after, regardless of the result. But I'm wondering, is the Liberal Party mm -hmm. still committed to those regional and local voices legislated, as Mr Dutton suggested six months ago? Absolutely. We're committed to a policy that recognises our first Australians in the Constitution and so many Australians agree with us. They don't agree about Anthony Albanese's, Albanese's divisive voice inside the Constitution, but they agree with that recognition. And we worked very hard in government on local and regional voices. But I'm the Deputy Leader of the Party, Kieran. I'll work with my colleagues on whatever we need to do post next weekend to bring Australians together. So just in that answer, you also suggested that, that the referendum, that second referendum, is something that you would also continue to argue for as an opposition that, um, that Mr Dutton committed to on this program a few weeks ago. That backs in our determination to recognise Indigenous Australians in our constitution. And what that points to is the distance that Anthony Albanese has gone from what ordinary Australians expect. Of course we want to see that recognition. We want to see the country come together. Uh, we, we don't believe that pushing ahead with this divisive voice has been anything but against the interests of closing the gap of bringing all Australians together, but most importantly, most importantly, making sure that outcomes for our first Australians improve. And the care, the compassion, the understanding, that's hard work, Kieran. It's hard work that we're all up for. And we need to remember that uh, the voice is not going to produce those answers for Indigenous Australians. It simply isn't. But we do want to see the work that every Australian expects from all sides of politics. And, and finally, do you think that voters are differentiating between the voice and its judgment and their judgment of the government and the Prime Minister? In fact, many seeing it, according to uh, those in the government, as a point of conviction for the Prime Minister. I, I, I think Australians are wondering why he is obsessed with this Canberra voice and why he can't recognise the lived experiences of their own lives. I mean, we've had 105,000 people call the National Debt Helpline this year, Karen. That's an extraordinary number. We now know that people are calling our lifeline type support services and mentioning their mortgage cost much more than they ever used to. And that's not surprising given that the average mortgage has gone up $22,000 a year. So as I travel the country, as my coalition colleagues talk to ordinary Australians, sure, they are mentioning the voice and they know the referendum is happening, mm. but they are also seeking answers from a prime minister who promised he would not leave them behind, who promised that life would be better under him and who simply seems to be unable to engage or even understand what their real world problems are. Deputy Liberal Leader Susan Lee, appreciate your time. Talk to you soon. Thank you.